Hello and welcome to this beginner starter guide in Logic Pro 10. My name is Thomas George and in this course I'm going to give you my five steps for Logic Pro 10. So Logic Pro 10 is a fantastic piece of software but when you open it up you might not know what to do straight away. So in this course I'm going to give you some tips and techniques and just show you really my five top steps. So these are software instruments and MIDI, recording audio, plugins, mixer and automation. So let's jump into the first one, which is software instruments and MIDI. Okay, step one, which is software instruments and MIDI. So when we create a new track in Logic Pro 10, this window will appear. This will give us a few different options. So we have software instruments and MIDI, then we have audio and drummer. So let's just have a look at this software instruments and MIDI here. So it says plug in a MIDI keyboard or use the keyboard on your Mac to play and record built-in virtual instruments. So basically, if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can use this to play. It's like a little MIDI, which is Musical Instrument Digital Interface. You can use this to play some of the notes or you can use something called Musical Typing. For this, we're going to use Musical Typing because not everyone will have a MIDI controller. But if you have one, feel free to use that. Then we have a few things at the bottom here, but let's just leave that for now and hit Create. Okay, now we're going to open something called Musical Typing. We can go up to Window and go down to Show Musical Typing, or we can use the key command, Command K. Let's just hit Command K and then this will appear. So this is basically like a little keyboard. You can use with your mouse, you can play notes, or you can actually use your Mac keyboard. So the A will link up to this C. S to D, etc. So you can play chords like this. It's not ideal. But if you're traveling, if you're on the go, it can be done. So a few things as well, like pitch bend if you hit one or two up here. And modulation. If you've got headphones in or if you've got a pair of speakers, you can hear it goes between these. And then we have octaves. Then we have velocity, which is basically how hard the note is hit. And then we have sustain if you hold down the tab key. So this is basically musical typing. We have another view here. <laughs> if you want to bring the keyboard up like so. So this is one way we can actually play in some stuff with software instruments. Software instrument basically just means a virtual instrument. So if you look on the side here, or if you hit this button in the top left, this will open and close the library. And this will allow us to just download loads of instruments. If we go on to Logic Pro X in the top left, you need to go to Sound Library and download all available sounds. People ask me this all the time. Why have you got so many different sounds? Why have you got so many different keyboards? Because I've downloaded all the available sounds. So Logic Pro X, Sound Library, make sure you download all the available sounds. And then you should get a load of these instruments on the side. So there's loads of cool stuff like drum machines, guitars, pianos, synths, world instruments. So it's like uh, percussion, keyboard, string, etc. Bass sounds. I'm not going to go through them all because I recommend the best way to actually just use these synths and keyboards is to just go through and just play around. So let's go and synthesizer. Let's choose bell. Um, okay, delicate bells. Let's try that. Okay, and this will appear. Obviously, it's a bell sound. Okay, and um, there's a few ways we can actually record this in. One is we can hit this big record button up here and physically play it in. Or two, we can actually type in the MIDI information. For now, let's just play something in. Let's record it in. Make sure the metronome is on, which is up here. The metronome will keep us in time. And then either hit R to record or hit this button. So we can do something like that. Really basic, really simple. Or alternatively, we can hit this scissor button up here on the top left. And then we can just draw in yeah, some MIDI information. So basically a keyboard is put on its side. And this is what it is. And going across is time. So we can just go through and draw it in. We can change this cursor here to a pencil tool. 
Then we can just draw in some information. If we backspace, it will delete. Okay, let's just hear this. So the first part I actually played in and the second part I drew in. Okay, so you might have noticed the first bit wasn't completely in time. So what we can do is actually just put this in time by doing something called quantizing. So I'm going to change this back to the point at all. And then we can either drag and select all this, or we can hit Command and A. Then we need to quantize by hitting this Q button here. Then we have the quantize amount. I'm going to leave this at 16th notes. Boom, and you'll notice it's just gone in time. So let's play this back. Okay, great. We can always loop. You notice up here, if we drag over, it will make a loop. Then we can always copy this over, hold down Alt, and we can always double click this, and then we can actually go into the Piano Roll Editor and just edit some of this. So this one's actually different to that one. If we right click, there's more options here. So if we want to mute on and off, loop on and off, we can actually make it loop like crazy. We can drag it back. We can go on to loop and it's off again. So this is the way of making loops and beats if you want to make them quickly is just make loads of loops. I like to go in and drag them over separately just so I can customise the loops a bit and change them around just so they're not too repetitive. It really depends on what you want to do. Okay, so you notice the second one's slightly different. Okay, great. We can always go up to this tool here and we can choose the text tool. Now we can rename this two, we can rename the first one one. And there's just some ways of really just uh, going in. Of course, we can loop on and off with the right click button. We can mute on and off as well. We do have shortcuts if we want to mute this on and off. So we can just go through and make loops quickly and mute different ones. That's kind of how I make loops. We can add another track just by hitting this big plus button. Let's choose another software instrument. Okay, now let's choose a drum kit. Okay, and let's uh, drag this over. The same information before, just so we can go in and just see what's going on. We don't have to use this information, but it's good to actually see what's going on. Okay, you'll notice the drums actually link up to different notes on the keyboard. So there's a kick drum. There is an open hi-hat, so it's about going through and finding what they are, but generally the hi-hats are F-sharp, G-sharp, open one's an A-sharp, kick is a C, snare is a D, the clap is a C-sharp. So you can just see here, I'm going to put an accented one there. There we go, okay. Copy this over, maybe add that there. Okay, you might not be able to do this straight away, but this is just a way you can draw in drums. So just go through, find out where the different drums are. You can just drag on the side. Like so. Okay, and let's just close this. We can just drag this down or we can hit this scissor button up here, top left. And then we can just put loop on and off if we want. What I want to do is if you drag at the top, it loops, drag towards the bottom, we can change the size of this and now I'm going to loop it. And let's just hear this back. We can loop actually this grey area up here. And if we click on this grey area, we'll actually go orange. This is a loop. So this is basically how we can make a loop with MIDI instruments in Logic Pro 10. I'm going to add one more. Let's add a bass part. I'm actually going to do the same and just copy the information over. If you do make a mistake like that, you can just hit Command and Z. 
just so I know what the notes are actually doing. So it's my favourite way of actually writing music is seeing what the other notes are doing rather than just guessing. Okay, and then uh, so the first one is an E. So I'll use this bass note. Second one is a C major, so I might go down to a C. The third one is a kind of a A minor, so let's go to an A. And this one is a C again, so I'll go back down to the C. And this is kind of a passing note, so I'll just leave the C going. Now I can add a bit of rhythm to make it a bass part, make it a bit more exciting. I'm holding down Alt here just to copy stuff over. Okay. Let's copy this rhythm over. I'm just this is really just a quick crash course for anyone that wants to learn Logic Pro. Because Yeah, I think I'll just give you my, my top tips to get started today because Sometimes it's essential to know the stuff like the preferences, but a lot of time it's a lot more fun just to jump in and start making music straight away. So let's just copy the first one over, hold the loop down. And now you might have noticed I haven't chosen the bass part. So what I can do is actually go over to here, the library, and let's choose bass. And there's a few different bases I can choose. Let's try finger style bass, okay? And now if we hit space bar, it'll play the loop. Octave is a bit low, so we can just click on this, double click, open up the piano roll, Command A to select all, and just drag it up an octave. You can go through and change certain bits. For example, I didn't like that note there. Might add another note here, D. Okay, we've got a loop going now. So that's basically how we can make a quick loop in Logic Pro 10. So it's really about just selecting the MIDI instrument, going through here, and just choosing an instrument. That's the best way to get started, of course, is stuff like editing the instrument, changing the sound. But for now, if you just want to make music, the best thing is to just use one of these preset sounds, use one of the sounds from Logic. There is some fantastic ones. I really like some of the piano sounds, a lot of the world instruments, and it all comes with Logic Pro, which is fantastic. So just hit the plus button, choose software instrument, and you can either play it in with a MIDI keyboard, or you can use musical typing by hitting Command and K, or you can just use the piano roll editor and type it in here. If you are interested in learning music theory, be sure to check out my music theory course. If you go to u.thomasgeorge.com, this is my online academy where I do have a complete music theory course. But yeah, let's get on to yeah, the second point, and that is recording audio. Okay, step two, we're going to record audio. So we've got a loop going with our MIDI instruments or software instruments. And now let's actually add on some audio. There's a few ways we can do this. We can either find an audio loop, an audio sample, or we can record our own audio information. Let's record our own audio information by hitting this plus button up here. If we hit this, this will allow us to create a new track. This time, let's choose audio. We've got a couple here. I've got audio recording a microphone or line input and we've got record guitar or bass using Logic Pro as an amp. So what Logic Pro does, or Logic Pro 10 does, it has a virtual amplifiers. So if you plug in a guitar or a bass, you don't have to actually record up your amplifier. You don't have to have it send a line out or use a DI box from your amplifier. Logic Pro does have some virtual amps, which are pretty good. But for now, let's just click this one. And we will need the audio interface to do this. That's the only thing about recording audio. So if you don't have an audio interface, you can't actually do this. So I'm about to plug in my audio interface now. Okay, so you might have noticed that there is another microphone appear here. I'm just gonna show you how to actually set up a mic in Logic Pro. So you will need some kind of audio interface. The one I'm gonna show you is this one here, which is a Shure X2U. It's a small portable audio interface. And all you really have to do to set up an audio interface is plug this into your computer you want to record Logic Pro with. So this one is USB, so all I have to do is plug in the USB. And that's basically it. 
And then if you're using a mic like this one, which is a shotgun microphone, it does have phantom power, so you will need the 48 volts or phantom power turned on. But make sure everything is plugged in first of all before you actually turn on phantom power. So one end of this goes into the audio interface and the other end goes into the microphone. Okay, you will have some kind of light up here. And I'm getting a flashing signal on the screen which says, do you want to use the audio interface sure digital? Which basically means Logic Pro has realized there's an audio interface plugged in now and it's asking me if I want to use that. So then you just have to plug the XLR. Generally it will be an XLR. You can get USB microphones but they're not as good. They really aren't. Then you can just plug this in. Okay. If you do want to record audio, you will generally need a pop shield or you will get a pop, 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 the pop sound. And okay. So let's just use this now. So Logic Pro, do you want to use the audio device Shaw Digital? So just hit use. And it might take a moment just to load. And okay, the output is still set the same. The input, I'm going to change. But it doesn't seem to appear here, so we can just cancel this. And if we go up to preferences in the top left and go, so Logic Pro X, preferences, and go to audio. Here we'll see output device, sure digital. I'm going to keep the output device as it was before. And input device, sure digital. So the output, I'm actually recording through an external monitor, so I'm leaving the output there. But the input, I want a sure digital. Okay, so that's another way if you go on the plus button and you don't see the input appear here. It might just be one, two, one and two. It doesn't really make too much sense. Another thing you can do is go up to the preferences. So Logic Pro X, preferences, audio, and here you can select your output device and your input device and your buffer size. Okay, okay and now to actually set up a microphone or an audio track, just hit this plus button. Choose audio, it should all be set up because we did this in preferences. Hit create, and then you have to make sure if you're using a microphone like this, that phantom power is turned on. You might get small popping sound when you turn on phantom power. You can see the waves shoot up there. And now you should be able to hear this microphone. If you don't, if you don't hear it, make sure, sure monitor's monitor turned, turned on, on which, which is this button, button here. here. So, so let, let me, me just, just uh, zoom in. So here we go, here's the monitor, input monitoring. Input monitoring means we can hear it back. And this one is record enable. So if it's record enable, you need this selected to be able to record. But input monitoring, this one, this is so you can hear it back. Sometimes you don't want to hear it back. For example, when I do my voiceovers, I don't want to hear my voice, it puts me off. So I always have input monitoring off. Some people might want this on. Then all you have to do is hit this big red button up here, or R to record. Then we can record in the voice. Something like that. And then we can do the same with a loop. Turn off input monitoring, turn off record enable. And that's basically how we set up a microphone in Logic Pro 10. It's the same principle for a guitar, but you will need an audio interface that has a line input, not just an XLR input. For a guitar, you will want to physically plug it in. Unless you're miking up a guitar amp, then you will need a microphone. But you can't do this without a microphone or without an audio interface. Okay, so let's go on to the next step. Okay, so step three is all about plugins. So we've gone through software instruments, we've gone through audio, and now let's have a look at plugins. So this is just a quick crash course so you can get into Logic Pro and just start making your own music today. There's one thing, knowing all the technical stuff, another thing actually making music and doing all the fun stuff, which this video is all about. If you'd like to continue learning with me and you want a full detailed course all about Logic Pro, I recommend checking out my complete course in Logic Pro 10. It's over 14 hours long. It's a complete guide that should show you from beginner to advanced how to actually make music in Logic Pro 10. Also have some interviews with some of my music industry friends. If you'd like to check this out, make sure you go to u.thomasgeorge.com to check out my online academy or just visit my website, thomasgeorge.com. Okay, so let's have a look at plugins. So each one of these instruments, we can actually add effects and plugins to it. The way we do this, the easiest way we do it is by using this inspector button 
or this I button in the top left. So if you hit this, this will bring up a channel strip, this is called. It has loads of different things. You might notice these are plugins already. So a lot of these already have plugins on them. So we can actually click on all of these. And this one at the top here says EXS24 will bring up the instrument. So we can go through this and just tweak certain things. So let's just move this over here and just solo the bass by hitting this headphone button just here. If you're using a different version of Logic Pro 10, it could be an S and this could be an M for mute, but it's the same thing. So if I move the cutoff, this dial here, you notice the sound changes. We have loads of different synths. We don't just have this one in Logic Pro. We have tons of them. These are the different synths. But let's have a look at some of these plugins below. So we can actually add on effects on top of the synth. So you notice this one here says bass amp. So if we click on bass amp, we'll bring this up, which is meant to be a bass amp. Quite simple. It's got boost and tone. More bassy, more trebly. High frequency cut. Easy, we have different options as well. I'm not going to go through all these plugins because there's loads of them. I just want to show you how you can actually add on plugins. Then we have a compressor, which basically makes the quiet stuff loud and the loud stuff quiet. You can move some of these dials. I do go through the compressor in a lot more detail in the complete Logic Pro course. Pedal board, which is meant to represent guitar effects and just drag these over. You can just delete them by hitting backspace. Okay, so that's the bass. Let's go on to this bluebird, this drum kit. So we have a drum kit, which is pretty cool in Logic. We can go through, change the different kick drums. Tune the different drums just by clicking them, clicking on the stuff on the side. So that is nice and logic. Probably have channel EQ. If you're used to a digital audio workstation, you know what EQ is. Hit this analyzer button, it will show us the frequencies, the waves. And just go through, drag these, change them around. But this is just a basic course just to get up and running. I'm not going to go through all the details now. Let's have a look at this delicate bells, what we've got on here. So let's solo this with the headphone button. And then we've got compressor, we've got tape delay. Let's open this up. So we can change the delay type. Feedback. The wet amount. So if you have too much feedback, it can get a little crazy. There we go. Okay, so that is the tape delay. The best way to learn is just to go in, mess around, and stop playing with stuff, really. So we can actually add some stuff. So let's go back to this bass. Let's solo this with the headphone button. Let's add something here. So all we have to do to add something, is just find a space and just go in and add a new plugin. So find a space below here. And then we've got all these different plugins here. Let's go to pitch. That's an easy one. Let's go to pitch shifter. I recommend going through all these and just working out what they do. Pitch shifter quite literally just changes the pitch so we can make it higher or lower. Change the mix. You hear the notes change. Okay, so that's just an easy one. If we click on it here, want to replace it, you'll see this arrow. We can go through and change another one. We could change it to, say, uh, tremolo. Let's choose tremolo. You'll notice if you've got headphones on, it's going the left or right speaker. You can change the rate. Here it's going at a faster rate. Now it's going pretty crazy. If you haven't got headphones on, using a mono device like a phone, it might not sound that mad, but like that. Okay. We can also add on plugins to audio instruments as well. Let's just ba, solo ba, 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 ba. <laughs> my terrible singing. And let's add on um, an audio effect here. Let's add on pitch, pitch shifter. Obviously notice it's gone a lot higher. We can go down 
to say reverb and add on. Let's try, yeah, just one of these reverb space designers. Cool. Let's try space designer. And we've got loads of different presets and defaults for these plugins as well. So if you can't think of one, you don't want to make it from scratch, you can actually go through and change them. There is some crazy presets you can get, especially the warped effects. This kind of thing. It's pretty mad. And you can turn off the plugin just by hovering above it, and you'll see a circle with a line for it, and that will turn it off. So let's go back to the finger style bass and let's go to the bass amp. If you double click on this, we can actually go through and click a drop down box. It's the same for pretty much all the plugins, the logic ones, and we can use one of these presets. So let's go on the razor bass. Let's hear what this sounds like. This will change the sound. It's quite subtle. So we can go through and change the presets. Same with the synths. So if we click on where it says Sculptor, this is a type of synthesizer in Logic Pro. Click this drop down here. Some versions of Logic Pro have a left and right arrow, or just use a drop down. Let's choose Bowed Instrument. Let's try Bowed Lead. So you can hear that's instantly changed. I'm not going to go through this instrument now. It is a bit complex, but I do talk about this on my complete Logic Pro course. It's called Sculptor. So this is basically the plugins. You can add on different effects to each instrument separately. That's basically, yeah, the third step in this five-step guide. Okay, step four. It's the mixer. So the mixer is one of my favorite things in Logic Pro 10, actually. It's one of the best mixers in all the digital audio workstations I've used. It is, yeah. Very intuitive and quite straightforward, actually. There's a few ways we can open it. We can either hit X to open the mixer, or we can hit this button up here. That looks like a mixer. Or we can use a key command, which is Command 2. And you will have to enable tools, advanced tools. So if you haven't done this yet, to perform Command Open Mixer, the feature Extra Window is required, which is available to when you show advanced tools. So if you haven't actually done this yet, if this is a new version of Logic Pro 10, which it is on this new computer, I'm using a different computer to normal, you will have to enable advanced tools, and there you go. It will open up. If you do hit Command 2 several times, it'll just bring up loads of different versions, of, well, loads of uh, the same version in different windows. If you hit X several times, it will just open and close the window. Same with this button, it'll just open and close the window. If you do want a separate window, if you do have any external monitors around, like I normally work with one or two external monitors, you can drag it over to an external monitor. But if you're just using it on a laptop or just one Mac, you might want it all in the same window, really. It depends on how you work, but I like to have separate monitors, but it depends if you do have separate monitors. If you're on the go, if using a laptop, you might not have this option. So this brings up the mixer. It looks a bit like an analog mixer if anyone's been to any recording studios or they've seen the analog mixers it's based on that so we have each channel strip so remember we said before if we click on the side we get a channel strip it becomes yeah a channel strip down here and actually links up and tells us what is going on so you see here bowed lead it says bowed lead down here bluebird says bluebird finger style bass finger style bass audio on audio one we can change the volumes independently with these knobs here the dials we can change the pan with these knobs Let's just zoom in a bit. So if we want one going to the left speaker, one going to the right speaker, we can zoom in or out. And then we get the outputs. Then we get bus. I'm not really going to talk about bus, but bus is where we send the instrument to another channel. So if you want to add an effects separately, we can send it there and add part effects to this one and keep it as it is. This is useful for reverbs or time-based effects. Like I said, I'll talk about this in my complete Logic Pro course. Then we have the audio effects. So these, these are basically the plugins we talked about previously. And then we have these little boxes here, which will open up EQ. So this will open up the equalizer. So that is, in a nutshell, what the mixer does. So then we get the master volume, the stereo out. The difference between the stereo out and the master is a stereo out you can add on effects. Master is just the volume. Ideally, you don't really want to touch the master volume too much. I'd more concentrate on the stereo out. You don't really want to go into the red. Let's just play this back now. So the stereo out is going into the red a bit, so we can pull it down a bit. Or alternatively, we can turn the separate instruments down. 
like so. Now we can go through and just change some of the volumes of these effects and these instruments. So I've just put the um, the singing or, or my attempt of singing into the right speaker. So we can go all the way to 63 or we can put it part way through. Generally you want the lower frequency instruments like the bass and the kick drum in the middle. So I'm going to put this keyboard part to the left. And I'm going to put it a bit quieter. So I'm just going to also change this. I just want the first loop. So we can close the mixer here and just go in, hold down Alt and copy over. Like I said, Command 2 to open the mixer in a new window. And this is just a quick overview of the mixer. There's loads more stuff we can do. We can save the channel strip settings. So say I really like what I've done to this bowed lead here. I can click on here on the top. So if I just hold down and click it, I can go on Save Channel Strip Setting and I'm going to rename this Bode Lead Thomas. So basically, I can open this and you'll notice here, Bode Lead Thomas is now one of my save presets. So I really like the way I changed the tape delay or I added a new effect and I can change this and save it. So save channel strip setting. What I do a lot of the time, my main computer, I actually use a lot of my own presets that I've been making over the years. But it's a good idea to start with the pre-made presets on Logic Pro, adapt them, create your own, create your own sounds, just to kind of make your own custom sounds. It is a lot of fun as well. So we get this kind of stuff. We get the output group. Uh, group is where we can basically put instruments together. So say for example, you record the singer several times, several takes, and you want to layer them together. You can group these vocal takes together. So when you move one of them, you can edit the other. Um, so grouping is stuff like, yeah, volume, mutes, editing, so you can group these. But I wouldn't worry about that too much if you're new to Logic Pro. It's more just about knowing what the stuff does and just jumping in and making music. So the mixer is basically just the channel strip setting on the side. So if you hit this I button, at the top left, this will open and close the channel strip setting. And it's just a load of them together, one for each of the instrument. It's pretty much it. And then we've got a master one. And we can change some effects. We can add EQ. And then we can just, uh, yeah, mix like that. A lot of it's about using the ear, a lot of it's trial and error. Uh, of course, you will need to know stuff like what EQ, what compressor does, the different modulation effects, so the different effects like chorus, phaser, that kind of thing. But really, it's not as complicated as it looks. When I first saw a mixer, I was like, whoa, especially an analog mixer in real life, which is basically the same as this. I was really confused. But now, it's just, yeah, it's just the channel strip and the load them stuck together. It's kind of what the mixer is. Okay, next we're going to look at the fifth step, which is automation. Okay, now let's look at step number five, which is automation. So automation allows us to change certain parts of the track or the instrument over time. So basically, if you want, say, this finger style bass to start off quiet and get louder, we can do this with automation. All we have to do is hit this button here, which will show or hide automation, or we can just use the button A, and this will open and close the automation. You'll see the track gets a bit transparent. It's a bit darker as well. And you you see, yeah, these lines appear when you click on them. So let's just click on this, and this will create loads of dots. We can actually just undo them with Command and Z. And you'll notice on the side here, it says volume. So volume means, yeah, what is being affected, what is being automated. So we can go through and change some of these. So if we want something on Sculptor, we can change whatever's going on there. I won't look at Sculptor now. It is a bit complex if you're new to... Logic Pro. Let's just start with volume. So we can go through and we can just click, drag it down, and this will change this effect or this parameter over time. In this case, it's volume. So let's listen to this bowed lead. You'll notice it starts off quiet and then it gets louder. And it comes in there. You can do the same with pan. So you can make it a bit crazy if you want. So let's start off down there and go up there and gradually go there. So let's hear this. Should hear it. Or 
one of my favorite things about Logic Pro is live automation. So if you change read to one of these, touch lateral right, let's choose touch. What this means is when I change certain parts in the instrument, it will actually record it in. So all I have to do is play and open up this track, open up this instrument. So finger style bass, hit this I button. Let's go to the XS24, which is the synthesizer. It's actually a sampler. I'm going to change this cutoff. Okay, and when I hit play and I move this dial here, it's going to move the automation on there. You ready? There we go. We can go to the start again, and this time I can change drive. Resonance. So what the touch one means is when you move it and let go, it'll go back to the default. Latch means when you move it and let go, it will stay where it is. So you notice the line stayed there. And if we go to touch, the line jumps back. That's kind of the difference between touch and latch. I wouldn't really use right. It can be a bit dangerous if you're new to Logic Pro. Remember to stick it back to lead and then it will save it like this. You can always go through and need to up by hand because sometimes we do like that it can be a bit jagged. You can always go through and need to up like so. That's kind of what automation is. Automation just allows you to change a parameter over time. So it could be volume, it could be pan, it could be live automation, which I really love doing. So live automation just allows you to give you more of a real feel. So you can change certain effects over time. Let's go to Bluebird. Okay, let's. Let's actually add on a reverb. Okay, let's open up Space Designer. So we've got Space Designer Reverb. So the reverb's all the way down there now. And let's turn this here into, change it to Latch. Okay, now I'm going to hit Spacebar. I'm going to whack up this reverb and put it back down again. Let's hear this. <laughs> okay, remember to turn this back to Read. Obviously, this isn't the best track in the world. It's just throwing some ideas down just to show you how you can start making music this easy in Logic Pro 10. So this is really, yeah, the five main steps. Software, instrument, a MIDI, recording audio, plugins, mixer, and automation. One more thing we need to do is actually bounce this down. So the easiest way to do this is just select this loop area up here and just drag it wherever you want the bounce to start, wherever you want the mix to start. Bounce is where we just print the mix and then go to File, Bounce, Project or Section. If you've got anything muted, it won't actually play. If you have something soloed, it will just record or write this. So let's go to Project or Section, or we can use the key command, Command B. Then we can use PCM, which is kind of a higher quality, uncompressed version. MP3, if you want a lower quality, compressed version. MP3, 320 bits still good, so we can change the bit rate over here. So a lot of music you'll hear I um, mean, nightclubs and stuff will be at 320 bit MP3. A lot of stuff on the radio will be a lot lower. We can choose PCM if you want a high quality or tick and both if you want both. Sometimes it's good to have both. So if you just want to quickly send a friend a bounce, um, you could just have as MP3. If you want to put something out publicly, we'll use a PCM. So you can choose the AIFF or a Wave, which are the same really. AIFF is the Apple version, and the Wave's a more kind of universal PC version. Choose the resolution, sample rate. Um, 24 bit, 44, 100 is fine. If I'm going a bit fast here, just you can just choose them and select the default one. It will be absolutely fine. And then just hit OK. You can name it here, test, song. You can choose where you want to save it. So I'm just going to put it on the desktop. Hit bounce. And yeah, it's as easy as that really. And it'll bounce depending on uh, the length and the amount of instrument you track. It might take a while, it might take a few seconds. And here we go, you'll notice I've got Test Song MP3, Test Song Wave. You probably can't really notice the difference right now. So this is the Wave, or the WAV. And here's the MP3. Sounds pretty much the same, but if you're blasting this through large speakers, we've got a lot of tracks. If it's quite intricate song, it will make a big difference, whether it's a Wave or an MP3. That's basically, yeah, how we can bounce the track as well. So thank you again for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. And if you do want to continue learning with me, make sure you check out u.thomasgeorge.com, which is my online academy, or visit my website, thomasgeorge.com, 
to get access to my complete Logic Pro course. I've also got an Ableton Live course, a Music Theory course, a GarageBand course, I'm currently making an FL Studio course, and a Mastering course if you would like to get access to this. If you do want that customised one-to-one experience, you can book an online call with me if you go to thomasgeorge.com slash call see if there's any available times if you would like to speak to me. So thank you again for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you soon.